morning it is tuesday today and i'm thinking of doing like a little sort of studio vlog but i want this to focus on creating a project for my portfolio so i'm really really fussy about the things that i put in my portfolio because i want my portfolio to attract more of this same type of work that i want to work on if that makes sense so i only put in the projects that i'm really really proud of and I want to do more of. So at the moment I think there's only four projects in my portfolio and I would recommend about six to seven projects um, just to get a good understanding and a good variation of the type of work that you like to do and the type of work that you're strong at. So I was thinking of doing like a little passion project today and it's going to be some sort of branding project because that's my favourite. And I was wondering what type of company to do this for. And I've settled on a stationery company. Um, so that will be everything from logos to stationery to um, colour palettes and mood boards and stuff like that. So I am going to do a passion project for a stationery company that, that doesn't exist. But I want it to look nice and just to show off my capabilities and just to add more things to my portfolio. So let's get started. So first things first is sorting out the mood board and I always go to Pinterest first for this. I like to source inspiration there, get some ideas for colour palettes and general imagery and just set like a mood and a tone with the overall project. So I save these one by one to a document that I'm using in Affinity Designer. And then I just try and pop them into a nice looking grid with a little description and some uh, colour choices that I've picked from each of the images. So these aren't necessarily like graphic design logo images, they're images that I just want to convey the proper mood and feeling that I want to get across in the branding project. I love how cute these are. I've gone for like a super cute kawaii pastel scene because that is what I always tend to go for. And here is the finished colour palette and mood board, nice and simple. And then I start looking at fonts. So I type in the brand name and go through my whole list of fonts and choose ones that I think would suit this project and the kind of look that I want to go for. So it's a mixture of serif and lines and sans serif type of fonts we have here. So I've chosen my fonts. As you can see, I'm stuck between two or three styles that I like, but I like to mix fonts together rather than using just one. Um, most of the time, that's just how I work and what I prefer. So I have these really thin um, line sort of fonts, not sure what the name is for those, um, but I was thinking more of a sans serif um, look so that the branding stays modern to match the products sold in this imaginary stationery shop, but also exploring the thick, chunky sort of serif fonts and maybe I'll edit those so that they're less of a serif on the end. Um, I really like this outline one on the bottom. But I'm thinking sometimes these fonts might make it start to look like a restaurant and we don't want to go there. So this is definitely going to be mixed with some sort of illustration or icon design just to get across the stationary feel. So I've chosen my font here. It's called Weimar, but I found it was a bit harsh with the serif. So I've gone in and edited all the points and just taken away all the lines and serifs on the font just to make it a bit more modern. And you can do this by pressing, um, right clicking on the font on Affinity Designer and just click convert to outlines. You can then edit all the font as if it's a shape. And now I'm using the font Caviar Dreams for the the above it just because I think it's a bit more simpler and the lines are the same kind of thickness and the same stroke. And I'm just experimenting with different shapes and different layouts of where to put things. And I really fancy this sort of arch type of shape with a sort of Tokyo 
Japanese sort of aesthetic. So this was a little experiment here based on, well, sort of based on my skyline. Um, but I like to sort of try a few different images before sticking with one. Um, as you can see here, I'm playing around with the shape of a fountain pen and I was turning it around to make it look like sort of um, a suit or something, or maybe the mountain, Mount Fuji. But uh, yeah, I wasn't sure that it worked. And then I also experimented with using actual images and buildings from the skyline. Um, but I think this might be a bit too complicated. It's a bit too complex for a logo. And as a graphic designer, I really, really love the simplest of logos. I think they are the most iconic and they stand out in your mind more so than the overcomplicated ones. But that didn't stop me from trying to experiment with different styles again. Here we have the fountain pen. I was trying to make it look like a mountain. Um, I didn't really get where I wanted in the end. But we play around anyway just in case something happens and we find some sort of miracle. And then this was the design that I've sort of settled on, which is this geometric, modern, nice pattern which could be used in multiple different ways. It could be applied to different things, stationary uh, websites, you know, loads of different things. So this is the one that I'm doing here and we kind of just stuck with it then until the end. And I really enjoy experimenting with different shapes, especially the arch and that's something that I wanted from the beginning. I think it's quite modern and it's quite um, on trend right now. Although I would say don't follow trends when it comes to logos, I think this is like a nice addition to this logo because I like how, I just like how, what's the word, um, versatile it is. So the logo isn't necessarily the arch, it's the font and everything with it, but the arch goes nicely here. So this is the final look. I know we got there pretty fast, but it, did, it didn't, it wasn't that fast at all. Um, yeah, I really like how it looks. So I have just been playing around with the color and the shapes, as you can see here. And stupidly, that's the part that I didn't film properly. <sighs> yeah, but I just took the shapes from the um, development stage and just played with the colors, used the same colors as what's in the mood board and just sort of place them around and made it like a little pattern out of it. So I'm gonna use this now as the first proper finalized-ish logo and just make some variations from there. So it is 4.30 now. I believe I've spent most of the day doing this little project, but 
I'm happy with everything. I love the way it turned out, the business cards. I wish were real. Um, I love the shape of them. So I just need to export all the images and pop them in my portfolio. <laughs> what in the world? What are you doing? Good morning. It has been a long time since I filmed this, the first half of this video. It's been two months. Life just sort of got in the way. Um, things with Mochi, who you can hear chewing his bone down below. Um, yeah, then I, then I got sick for like a month and then I've been sorting out top drawer things for the trade show. But now I need to update my portfolio. Finally, finally get around to it. I need to put this passion project of the inky pen on my portfolio. And I use Zyro for my portfolio. And I will show you how it works and how I upload things and how you customize the website in just a sec. I haven't looked at this project for a long time. Um, so it'll be exciting to export all the images and pop them in my portfolio nice and tidy and all in one place. So I haven't looked at this for a while, but we designed some nice little assets to go along with it, a nice bag mock-up, a sign, patterns and social media content, along with these larger images, which I think were for Instagram. Excuse Mochi behind me, he's just playing. Um, I really can't remember, I need to jog my memory. I've just seen they're labeled Pinterest, so. I guess, oh, you can't see. I guess they were for Pinterest. <laughs> so I'm going to export all these square images because I like all my images to have the same um, size on my website. I'll export all the square images. I will leave out the mood board, I think, and just have the nice finalized proper images on my portfolio. So this is currently my portfolio. We are in the editor mode, which is why you can see all the boxes highlighting everything. Um, I think it needs a big, bit of an update. Oh, that is not my Instagram feed. So that will need to be changed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really liking this purple anymore. My Mac is being so painfully slow lately. It's taken ages to, to switch between my design software and the website browser. We got there in the end. So here I am linking my real Instagram feed, which is really, really simple to do. Just link to your account and there it is. And then I wanted to update the interface from the lilac to the pink that I use more frequently. I just want to say thank you so much, Zyro, for sponsoring this video and allowing me to use your platform to create my portfolio. The website and everything about it is just so easy. As you can see here, it's a drag and drop system, which makes everything so simple. I actually learned to code in in uni and at my old job, but I haven't used it for so long and you don't need to anymore. Things like this are so easy. Not only that, it's also super, super affordable. I think it's the most budget friendly on the market right now. So check out their prices and see if it's right for you. The website also loads extremely fast and that is such a great selling point because when a website loads too slowly for me, I click off. And the customer support is second to none. I've received the best, most instant, most friendly customer support by using Zyro. And it's also available 24 seven. So my portfolio is updated. Here is the final look of the new page. Here's the homepage and the new inky pen is now on the front. Everything's up to date and I feel happy and less stressed. So the portfolio is done. Here is the homepage. It's all nice and up to date. If you'd like your own Zyro website, you can get up to 72% off plus three months free with any yearly plan. If you use my code Coco Natasha, I will pop the link down below. You don't have to start a website from scratch. They have plenty of templates to choose from. I'm actually using a template called Gust and I found that was a nice starting point to start from just to chop and change and edit certain bits and they have a bunch of templates to choose from so I'm sure you'll find something that matches your style and you can edit to suit your brand perfectly. And the website and the portfolio is finally up to date. It took a few months but that's because things got in the way but we got there eventually. Now I need to get on with Christmas orders and emails. It's just non-stop. I haven't had chance to actually sit down and do a top drawer trade show stuff um 
And that's the thing that's been bugging me the most is because they're so, so expensive and requires so much work. Um, but I have Christmas orders to get out. They are a priority and top drawer is also a priority. Um, so it's been very, very hard to delegate and prioritize because everything is a priority at the moment. Um, but yes, let's get on with some, let's get on with some orders. A fresh load of cello bags. productive day actually I have done orders I have I've been editing this video as I've been going um emails admin stuff like that I've been going through the to-do list things are still taking a while and I have finished my catalogue which I haven't shown you on this vlog um I'll probably show you on the next one um it's finished but I don't want to send it off yet I'm too afraid and I feel like I need to read over it another hundred times to make sure everything's perfect um, it's a catalogue for the trade show and for top draw and for my stockists and trade people 
Um, so it needs to be perfect. I'm printing my prices in this one. I didn't do that before. So it needs to be 100% correct because I can't change my mind about the prices once they're printed. Plus they're quite expensive to print. Um, so yes, I will show you that in the next vlog. Now I'm going to export this and edit it and hopefully upload it by the end of the week. So wish me luck. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.